The first uh, speaker we are honored to have with us today uh, is uh, Dr. David Domingo. He's um, an avid scholar and passionate researcher of online journalism with a special interest in redefining the practices, the identities involved in the production, circulation, consumption, diffusion of information. Uh, he currently is a um, professor of uh, journalism at the Université Libre of uh, Brussels, and he has also taught in the USA at the University of Iowa and at the Universitat Rovira i Virgili in Catalonia, which is also his home place. Uh, he's co author on, uh, of uh, books um, focusing on participatory journalism. And today I understand that, um, David, you will be talking about participatory forms of journalism and trying to highlight some of the best practices that are out there uh, for journalists and also for citizens in order to reach citizen journalism, or at least the ideal type of um, citizen journalism. And um, after uh, Mr. Domingo's talk, I will be presenting uh, the next two uh, ladies who are the speakers in this panel. So, Mr. Domingo. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much for this invitation to, to be here today to discuss uh, about things that I care about and things that I have seen uh, we all care about. And, and I, I'm afraid I will start uh, in, a, in a rather pessimistic tone uh, and will try, but I am uh, optimistic by nature and I will uh, try to get back to, to that uh, through, the, through the discussion uh, of my presentation today. Um, and I, I, I start in a pessimistic tone because if we put together uh, the, co the covers of time uh, in, with nine years different between 2007 and 2016, uh, we could ask ourselves what has happened to, to the internet, how we moved from uh, we are the media, uh, as, as Dan Gilmore uh, proposed and, and many others uh, uh, got excited about, that like everybody can participate in making society better and more specifically journalism better, to, uh, to an internet where uh, journalists are giving up on uh, comments in news and, and, and commentary in general uh, because it's dominated by hate speech, uh, by aggressiveness. And where has all this idea of participatory journalism gone, we could ask. And to think about it, uh, I think we need some historical perspective. We cannot discuss where we are today without looking back what has happened in these last 10 years. And Eight years ago, uh, uh, I was doing with uh, several other colleagues uh, interviews with journalists to understand what were their perceptions about this idea of participation of the audience in journalism. And back then, they were saying things like this that you can see in the slide, uh, which may connect very well to some of the things that many journalists still uh, hold today. Um, the first thing is the perception that participation is something that the audience wants and the technology allows, so we need to do it. Uh, it's, it's there, so we cannot avoid it, we need to engage with it, then we need to see how, but we have to be there. Uh, and then the second thing is that mm, in most online newspapers uh, and, and mainstream newsrooms, the way to deal with participation was uh, motivated by economic, the economic pressures of w journalism is in crisis. We need to get a more loyal audience. Uh, if we engage them in participation, we will warranty that they come back to our website uh, recurrently, and that will be good for journalism from an economic perspective. As a second thought, uh, many also mentioned journalistic reasons to, to engage in participation uh, or democratic reasons. We want to have access to new sources that beyond the official ones. We want to uh, help citizens to discuss about democratic issues. And there they, they would often uh, quote uh, the work of uh, Dan Gilmore uh, uh, to say, you see, there, there's, there's good things that can happen to journalism if we open up to participation. But definitely, in many newsrooms, uh, journalists would tell us it's the marketing department 
who, who is telling us we need to open forums, we need to open comments in news, we need to engage in social media. And in that context, we need to always remember that not everybody in the newsrooms has been uh, excited about the idea of participation. Many journalists were seeing this as a threat, as a waste of time, or as something that was incompatible with their uh, principles of keeping distance from the things we are reporting about. And that means also keeping distance from our public and not being influenced by, by them. Uh, so there is uh, very different attitudes within journalists and still today not everybody has the same uh, willingness to engage with their, with their publics. Uh, and that nuance also we could see it uh, in terms of uh, where did this media come from in terms of tradition? Elitist media uh, who were very proud of the uh, very factual reporting they were doing would create spaces for, journal for, for participation that were very separated from the newsroom where most journalists in the newsroom wouldn't get in involved in and would be in some cases even separate websites uh, that, that were, would be the playground for the citizens and don't let them complicate the life of the journalists. Uh, in, in the con on the contrary, the m more popular media would be much more naturally inclined to let's use whatever we get from the audience as input to our production uh, processes and uh, that would be uh, personal stories that would illustrate uh, the, the journalism they were doing and things like that. And we, we need to uh, understand that these different ways of dealing with participation produce different forms of participation. Uh, so we, I, I am making a, a case here for not to generalize about uh, the relationship between journalism and, as, as, and its audiences. But in, in any case, all newsrooms were faced with the challenge of how can we open up the doors to participation without being overwhelmed by it, by, uh, without being uh, completely uh, uh, unable to control what happens in the process. That, that was the main challenge eight years ago. And here you have uh, the main outcome of that research project and the media that were involved in it. But in what our main conclusion was that participation actually concentrated in two very specific moments in the production process of news. Uh, on the access and observation moment, we would see newsrooms eager to get input from citizens in terms of story ideas, in, in, in terms of uh, photos or other newsworthy material. And in the distribution, uh, and more specifically in the interpretation phase, you would see newspapers online more open to uh, let the audience behave as an audience, that is, react to what we, the journalists, have produced and give their opinions as citizens that uh, share their views on, on what is happening. The journalists were very, very reluctant to set up any uh, processes or practices that would open specifically the selection field and, and, and the processing and the editing process of making news. That was their core business and they didn't want to give it to, to, to citizens or share it with, with citizens. So that's where we were then. And you may ask, how far are we eight, ten years later? And, and I would say that we haven't gone much farther than one, what was the, the situation eight years ago. The main change, I think, is that things have become much more chaotic. Uh, but not that journalists are much more eager to explore participation. And they have good reasons for that. I mean, uh, comments in news are still uh, the biggest form of participation in online news websites, even if many websites are starting to close them. Uh, and many journalists and many citizens ask themselves, what is what do, do these comments in news contribute to, 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 the, to the process of public communication and, and common understanding of, of our society? Because there's so much hate, so much trash in those comments that maybe it's not worth 
is spending time in managing it. Uh, beyond that, uh, to complicate even things more, social media has developed a lot in the last 10 years, and most of the conversation is actually happening outside of the news websites, where journalists definitely have no control over what is being said, and they definitely have a hard time to engage in meaningful, meaningful interactions, except for those journalists who, who have a very specific area they co who, that they cover and where, that, where they have followers who uh, play the game of let's share information together to, to, mm, to make the understanding of that issue uh, something that goes farther than that just the last breaking news story. And overall, I think one of the things that we should uh, remember is that most citizens don't want to participate and don't have the time or the skills to uh, contribute anything meaningful to the public sphere. So it's just a very a small minority of citizens that actually participate that tends to be very, very loud. They, ten, uh, they tend to, to, to take a lot of uh, space and, and visibility in social media, but also in news websites. Uh, in, 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 in some uh, news websites, like the NPR, for example, shared their, their, their numbers, and they, they were saying, from the several hundred thousands of users we have, only 4,000 4, uh, are the ones who have contributed comments in a given month, and each of them contributes uh, 140 comments uh, per, per person, which means that basically there's a little corner of our audience that is talking to each other in our website, and everybody else doesn't really get anything from, there, from that. So how do we change that? How do we engage those silent voices? It's one of the things that worries me. Uh, and the other thing that Dan has showed very well today in, our, in, in his presentation is that those citizens that care for journalism who are not professional journalists uh, actually are doing interesting things uh, in the outskirts of mainstream media. There's very interesting citizen projects, but they are small, they are, they are uh, usually they don't have the, the social impact that mainstream media has. And that was one of the discussions we were having over lunch. How, how do we make uh, good journalism that engages uh, a widespread public, uh, something that works, that is sustainable, but also that uh, engages citizens in a, in a positive conversation and, and not, and not in, in uh, flames uh, that, that don't lead us anywhere. So mainstream media in the last couple of years have done something that I would say it's been a very big mistake, uh, I, and I think they have overreacted. They have, in many cases, uh, y uh, you have here some of the most notable examples, closed the comments in their news websites altogether. Uh, others have done uh, less radical moves, like uh, ending the anonymous comments and forcing users to register or limiting uh, comments in news to the people who pay a subscription. Uh, all, of, all of that is strategies to uh, limit the damage of uh, bad quality of comments, of comments that are incivil or incivic. But the, the, the main cons consequence of this has been to give social media, uh, the, the, uh, the social media has become the natural space for discussion about uh, the news, about current affairs, and I think that's not clever because then you're giving uh, the space, and I go back to the same example that Dan was using this morning, to uh, companies that do don't have the same principles, they don't have the same principles as journalists, and, it, and they don't want to admit that they are editors, that they are making editorial decisions. So this is, here you have the the rendered image uh, by the cartoonist of the Afton Post uh, newspaper in, in Norway after uh, the, their post on Facebook uh, with this picture was censored by, by Facebook. Uh, 
well, here, here you have like the graphic representation of the absurdity of, of Facebook's action. Uh, but it's not only that, it's not that only that uh, social media sometimes make arbitrary decisions, is that uh, in many cases they don't take responsibility on the lot of harassment that happens on their websites, uh, on their services, uh, while news, news websites have tried a bit harder to, uh, to keep comments in news uh, civil. And all in all, also there's one thing that I think we shouldn't forget, is that Facebook may be used by many people with uh, all its uh, uh, pros and cons, but other social media like Twitter were that are much more uh, geared towards public discourse, public, public debate, they are very elitist in, in the sense that uh, only a, a portion of the population uses it, it's usually mainly journalists, politicians, and people around that, that sphere. And, and therefore, mm, on social media, I'm still convinced that uh, the average citizen doesn't engage in discussing current events. So journalism uh, as an institution is still not fulfilling the, uh, the promise that uh, the internet offered us in terms of becoming um, a true public space beyond the, uh, the, the, the 19th century salons that Habermas theorized uh, where, where, where citizens would engage with discussing about uh, politics and, and what is common between us. So the internet holds that promise and my question is how can we uh, rethink how we do things in, in terms to try to see if, it, if we can get there and see if, it, if that is worth it. So let's go to see a couple of best practices. So th things that are happening already that give me hope that we could go in, in, in that direction. Um, the first one is like, let's forget about talking about comments in news or commenting news. Let's talk about engaging citizens into debating uh, current events and uh, the collective decision, the decision making processes that our politicians are engaged in and that many citizens usually feel completely disconnected from. So if, if that could be a name for journalism to understand the news in order for citizens to engage in collective decision making. Uh, one of the things that I'm seeing uh, in some news uh, websites is this idea of co-responsibility of the citizens in moderating the, 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 the debate, the discussion. Uh, I think this erasing the, the, the barrier between us journalists versus you uh, citizens in this context of debate uh, is, is a good thing because it responsabilizes uh, the, 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 the citizens in the, in the process. But the other thing is that it's not a good idea to just leave discussion in the hands of the citizens because then they will not see the point of discussing in a news website in comparison to discussing with their friends in, on Facebook. Uh, journalists need to be involved in, in, that, in those processes, which means, of course, investing time and resources, but hopefully for something that will be worthwhile. Uh, so if a journalist shows interest in, in, a, in a topic uh, that generates interest from the public to contribute uh, interesting things, and if the journalist leads the conversation and says, well, we are working on this topic have you any input for us? Uh, I think that's, that's a much more constructive uh, point of departure than letting people say whatever they want after a news story has been published. And also, I've seen news websites doing, focusing more resources on highlighting what is interesting that the citizens are contributing than deleting uh, wrong comments or comments that are, don't respect uh, the law or the decency. If you highlight uh, what you think 
is good quality, for a, an element of imitation, citizens tend, uh, will tend to, uh, to strive for, for, for that, to imitate that quality. Of course, if you also give some rewards and, and play, uh, there's an, an element of game in some of these new websites, uh, that, that's, also, that's also good. Two examples only. Uh, the Guardian, on one hand, uh, I think they, they, they did a very good job uh, in, their, in their early days, and, and they have probably been the ones who have kept the most civil uh, commentary areas in, uh, on the web. Uh, in, in around journalistic websites because they hired and they paid uh, moderators who are who were already members of of the of, of the commenting community uh, so people were uh, mo uh, helping to moderate with the journalists being part of the public and they also invested effort in giving a face to the contributors that were doing uh, things that were the most interesting, the most uh, thoughtful uh, comments. You get, you get interviews with participants in their website, uh, featured comments, uh, you have profiles with the summary of what each person has contributed. So I think that's a good example of how to generate uh, positive dynamics in a community of, of debate. And in the case of the correspondent, besides their, their business model that, that is very uh, promising, uh, the idea that you are subscribing to follow a specific journalist and a specific theme uh, connects uh, that journalist to people who actually are paying for information that, that is uh, of quality and that it goes beyond the generalistic uh, coverage of other media. And that means that around those journalists there is uh, communities forming uh, that in many cases are experts on the topic as well that contribute to the journalist's ideas and that end up fostering that the journalists can have a dialogue on what next in, in our coverage. How, how can we best cover this, this story? Another nice example uh, is, is when uh, news websites try to structure uh, debates and the, the Washington Post has done this several times uh, in, in this case, uh, you could browse the comments uh, based on the intersection of several questions uh, who, when you contributed to it, you were asked those questions and then you gave your comment. And those questions helped to position yourself in, the, in, in, in this issue, in this case, uh, gay marriage decision by the, by the Supreme Court. And it helps uh, have a more meaningful uh, uh, re reading more meaningfully what people are contributing. And I think it goes in, in one direction that, that I find very intriguing, which is why, why don't journalists treat uh, debate between their users as a news story in itself? Why don't journalists take the time to dig from the discussion what is the key ideas, the key arguments, the pros and cons defended by the different L members of of the debate uh, and write up uh, summaries of that that will hopefully help advance the debate uh, uh, much, 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 much farther and much more uh, constructively than if you just let people speak and I don't care what they say because they are just clicks for, for our website, they are just money. So that's one side of the good practices. The other side is reporting, uh, and and here I think I, I like the idea of uh, news media who are thinking of their audiences as sources that go beyond their usual sources. And, and many citizens have personal stories or information uh, that singularly can be news, can be relevant, but they may not have the skills or, or the time to, to share it. So a journalist can be the bridge between that story and the rest of the public. And more collectively, uh, citizens can contribute to stories. And those media that are doing crowdsourcing of their stories, asking their audience, are you experiencing these? Please send us data, and we are going to 
analyze it and, and make stories out of it, I think that makes a lot of sense because it's a, it's a collaboration where uh, journalists don't give citizens the whole responsibility of producing journalism, which in some cases it happens. In breaking news, you see many photos of people who are there when the uh, catastrophe or the event is happening and that is newsworthy, yes. But what happens with more in-depth problems of society, structural problems of society, uh, many citizens will not take the time to, uh, to uh, push that, uh, that agenda. And I think journalists have the, the, the responsibility of gathering those different potential inputs and fostering them uh, to transform them in, into, into news. In, in this case, the, the work of ProPublica, I think, is exemplary. Uh, in, in the, they, they have done many, uh, many projects that you can still see in, on their website where I like the, the sometimes they, they, they try to motivate people by making it very easy to participate and giving them uh, very concrete tasks that will, uh, as a game, uh, give them some rewards. And I, th I think, I think it's, not, it's not a catastrophic to think of uh, journalism as something that can be done differently than uh, putting a microphone in front of uh, an institutional source. It can be a game, it can be fun, it can involve people of many different, with many different skills. You just need to mm, share an aim and, and put it in, in motion. NPR is trying that too with uh, uh, this Hurricane uh, initiative that we, they are partnering, partnering with um, to basically, uh, as simple as, uh, please give us story ideas and participate in the process of deciding which ones could be uh, covered by our journalists. Uh, so, and in both cases, we are talking about uh, uh, non-profit initiatives, and I think that, that gives us some hint, or uh, at least to me, uh, 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 one of the reasons why journalism has not dealt very well with participation has been because it has put the uh, emphasis on the economic motivations to open up participation rather than on the civic community uh, building uh, motivations to, to foster participation. Some, some uh, other examples that are hopeful, very, very recent uh, announcements by the, the Coral Project, for example, uh, funded by the Knight Foundation and also involving the Times and, and the Post in the States. Uh, they are developing open source software that would help to manage uh, conversations with citizens or this process of asking citizens for news ideas uh, in an in a efficient way. I think that technology is not the only solution. Uh, open so so source software can help because uh, it's, it's much more scalable, it's much more adaptable, it's much, we can own it much more than outsourcing to Facebook our comments uh, system. Uh, but I think it's the attitude in the newsrooms, really, what, what needs to change. So this is a nice addition, but not, not enough, in my, in my opinion. And another nice... Uh, initiative, or promising at least, because we still haven't seen the, the outcome. Uh, the, the first draft partner network, for the first time, puts together under, uh, around the same table social media like Facebook or Twitter, uh, mainstream media projects, and also uh, more citizen or uh, alternative uh, uh, activist uh, initiatives around the idea of finding common strategies, skills, practices, and protocols for verification of information on social media. So social media will, will exist uh, whether journalists like it or not, uh, and people share things there, and sometimes those things are very worthwhile. So how can we more efficiently check that information and verify it with enough efficiency and, and, and uh, speed in, in if, if, it's, if, if, if time is crucial. Uh, but I, I don't know how, how far they, they will go, but I welcome the fact that 
big, big social networks are for the first time engaging uh, with journalism beyond the idea of uh, we, are, we should be your platform for distribution of news, uh, which so far were, was the main, the main selling point for social media. So to sum up, uh, what, what could be the next level for thinking the future of participation of citizens in journalism? To me, to, in order to answer that, we need to recap why participation, participatory journalism has not blossomed, has not uh, managed to develop in, in fruitful and, and strong ways so far. Uh, so, if we acknowledge that economic motivations in the newsrooms were stronger than journalistic, and that the focus was on deleting, deleting the, the hateful com content rather than fostering useful and inspiring contributions, and the fact that journalists were still today focused more on reporting than on leading a discussion, a debate with citizens, uh, I think we have the three ingredients uh, of why particip participation has not really uh, developed in, in online news websites. Uh, and the, th the examples we see out there that are interesting are more an exception than, than the rule. So I, I want to finish with what could be understood as, as uh, a call to look back to uh, the experience of public journalism in the 90s, before the internet had uh, developed into what it is today. At that time, uh, especially in the States, but it was replicated also in Europe and then soon abandoned because it was seen as too much of a hassle, I would say. Uh, journalists were trying to, or to organize meetings with uh, citizens uh, in, in, the, in, their, in, their, in their town to understand what were their worries, what were the topics they thought they were not well informed about, and that would inform journalists' work. And I think this dialogue about journalism is actually what could be at the core of a more, much more fruitful uh, participation. So rather than expecting citizens to produce journalism, let's discuss about them, about the journalism we do, in order to uh, do it better. And I think that that's a much more constructive point of view. Uh, and in that context, then journalism could see itself as a platform for civil collective debate, and the journalists would be uh, focusing on summarizing those debates, making sure that those who are not participating get a microphone in front of them and their voices get put into the debate. And for those uh, uh, powerful sources that actually have the means to, uh, to uh, have the PR professionals that will uh, explain how things should be interpreted. Well, let's not go to their conference, uh, press conferences. Let's let's not go to interview them if they are already putting their 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 news uh, press releases and videos online. Let's let's focus our resources on the people who are not being heard, who don't have the means to 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 express themselves, and uh, of course there's a responsibility in the process of breaking news that spread very fast on social media for verification, and their journalists still should have uh, a role, uh, still should do the, the hard work of fact-checking. Uh, but I think if, the, if we focus less on breaking the news that everybody is breaking and focus more on making sense of those news with the citizens and letting everybody uh, have their say, I think we will we'll be doing a much better service to society as, as journalists. That would be it for me, and I would love to hear your thoughts about it. I think we'll quick skip questions uh, for the end after the other presenters have also um, talked. Thank you. Um, David Domingo for outlining um, the new landscape and the new challenges for journalists and also outlining the new role that they are forced uh, to adopt in these changing circumstances. Uh, I think you have outlined a new landscape where citizens, journalists and algorithmic 
entities like Facebook, they all participate jointly in making the, uh, what, what news is about and helping it evolve. And I think you also described some best practices for what I would call like a shared governance of a community, public sphere, community space that is emerging online. So what does each actor contribute? So um, after this interesting talk, we'll continue with our next um, speaker, uh, Professor Dimitra Dimitrakopoulou. She's um, teaching and researching online and participatory journalism, social media and networks, new media literacy and hate speech online and on various web to, uh, platforms. Uh, Mrs. Dimitrakopoulou is assistant professor in the Department of Journalism and Mass Media at the Aristotle University of uh, Thessaloniki. And she's also the, the chair, correct me if I'm wrong, of the journalism studies um, section of uh, ECRIA. Um, so it's your turn. Thank you. Thanks, Katerina, and thank you, David, for the uh, great first uh, paper in this panel. Um, I have prepared my presentation in English, but I will speak in Greek, so I'll try to satisfy both uh, audiences, <laughs> if possible. Um, uh, λοιπόν, στη σημερινή uh, παρουσίασή μου θα χρησιμοποιήσω ως αφετηρία δύο βασικές έννοιες, την, uh, τις έννοιες της αλλαγής και της μεταμόρφωσης στη δημοσιογραφία, με σκοπό να προσπαθήσουμε να αναδείξουμε ένα ε, θεωρητικό πλαίσιο το οποίο να αναλύει, να αναλύει και να ερμηνεύει τις αλλαγές που βιώνει η δημοσιογραφία τόσο ως ρόλος όσο και ως επάγγελμα στη σύγχρονη εποχή. Ε, στο δεύτερο μέρος της παρουσίασής μου θα δούμε ε, μαζί μια σειρά από τα πρώτα δεδομένα που προέκυψαν από το World of Journalism Study, ένα project για τη δημοσιογραφία που τρέχει από το 2007 και έχει ως σκοπό να καταγράψει, να καταγράψει συστηματικά τις εξελίξεις στον χώρο της δημοσιογραφίας, καταγράφοντας τις απόψεις ε, των δημοσιογράφων για το επάγγελμά τους και το ρόλο τους σε περισσότερες από 60 χώρες. Ε, αν, έτσι, στην προσπάθεια μου να σκεφτώ τι άλλαξε από τότε που ξεκίνησαμε να μιλάμε για, τεχνολογι... για τις τεχνολογικές επιδράσεις στη δημοσιογραφία μέχρι σήμερα, ε, σκεφτόμουν ότι αν πριν από λίγα χρόνια τη συζήτηση μονοπολούσε ε, σχεδόν απόλυτα οι αλλαγές που προκαλούσε η τεχνολογία ε, στο πεδίο της δημοσιογραφίας, ε, πλέον έρχονται να προσταθούν στη συζήτηση ε, και οι επιπτώσεις που επιφέρει η κρίση σε όλες τις διαστάσεις της. Η κρίση της ε, αξιοπιστίας που απολαμβάνει αυτή τη στιγμή το δημοσιογραφικό επάγγελμα, η κρίση της βιωσιμότητας του επαγγέλματο η επιχειρηματική κρίση που πλήττει τους μηδιακούς οργανισμούς, ε, αλλά και η οικονομική κρίση που σαφώς ε, διαβρώνει τα οικονομικά θεμέλια της ε, δημοσιογραφίας. Ε, για να κατανοήσουμε τις τρέχουσες ε, εξελίξεις στη δημοσιογραφία, ε, χρειάζεται καταρχάς να ξεκινήσουμε από την παραδοχή ότι οι κοινωνικές διεργασίες εξελίσσονται σε διαφορετικούς ρυθμούς και μπορούν να συμπούν σε ένα πρόβλεπτο συχνά χρονοδιάγραμμα. Και για, και, για μια ακόμα, μια, και για μια ακόμα φορά είναι χρήσιμο να γυρίσουμε πίσω στους κλασικούς και, να, και συγκεκριμένα στον ορισμό του Αριστοτέλη για να δούμε την αλλαγή με την έννοια της κίνησης ε, και να δούμε πώς αυτό μπορεί να συγκροτήσει μια στέρεη θεωρητική αφετηρία για να κατανοήσουμε τη φύση της αλλαγής, τονίζοντας ε, ένα χαρακτηριστικό της, τη δυναμική της εξέλιξη ε, στον χρόνο. Και με την έννοια αυτή ε, αντιλαμβανόμαστε την αλλαγή, όχι ως μια συγκεκριμένη κατάσταση, αλλά ως μια διαδικασία που περνάει μέσα από πολλές και διαφορετικές διαδοχικές φάσεις. Ε, μια χρήσιμη διάκριση που πιστεύω ότι μας βοηθά να προσεγγίσουμε με περισσότερη προσοχή τις αλλαγές που διέπουν τη δημοσιογραφία σήμερα, προέρχεται από τον Ωρντεμπρίνκ, ο οποίος διαχωρίζει τη δημοσιογραφία ως θεσμό και τη δημοσιογραφία ως επάγγελμα. Και αν δούμε λίγο τη μία πλευρά ε, της, της διάκρισης αυτής ε, και έναν πολύ μεγάλο όγκο στη βιβλιογραφία, ο οποίος επικεντρώνεται στη θεσμική διάσταση της δημοσιογραφίας και πώς ε, αυτή αλλάζει ε, σήμερα, ε, θα δούμε ότι υπάρχει κάπως ένα δυσανάλογο. Από τη μία, η βιβλιογραφία ε, για τις αλλαγές που σχετίζονται με τη δημοσιογραφία ως προς το ρόλο και τη λειτουργία της είναι πλούσια, ε, στηρίζεται ε, κυρίως σε αλλαγές που σχετίζονται με εξωγενείς παράγοντες και πολύ λιγότερη προσοχή έχουμε δώσει στις αλλαγές που σχετίζονται με τις ενδογενές εξελίξεις στη δημοσιογραφία που συχνά αναπτύσσονται σταδιακά. Ε, ο Ρνεμπρίνκ στην προσέγγιση του αμφισβητεί αυτό το συμβατικό αφήγημα για τη θεώρηση των αλλαγών στη δημοσιογραφία μόνο από την, ή 
σχεδόν αποκλειστικά από, από τι αλλαγέ που διέπουν το ρόλο του. Και συνδυάζει την οργάνωση τη δημοσιογραφία με τη δομή τη δημοσιογραφία ω μισθωτή εργασία, συνδέοντά τη και με τι θεσμικέ και με τι ατομικέ διαστάσει τη δημοσιογραφία. Έτσι, λοιπόν, η διερεύνηση και η μελέτη τη δημοσιογραφία ω ενό πεδίου που αναπτύσσεται γύρω από αυτού του δύο πυλώνε είναι και μια προσέγγιση που προτείνεται και υποστηρίζεται από τη μελέτη World of Journalism που θα σα παρουσιάσω στη συνέχεια. Ε, Στόχο είναι να ερμηνεύσουμε αυτέ τι αλλαγέ και τι μεταμορφώσει στη δημοσιογραφία, σύμφωνα με την παραδοχή ότι η δημοσιογραφία είναι ένα πεδίο που χαρακτηρίζεται από ρευστότητα, το οποίο διαρκώ επανεφευρίσκει τον εαυτό του μέσα από ποικίλε κοινωνικέ, πολιτικέ και οικονομικέ δυναμικέ που ασκούνται πάνω του. Ε, λίγα λόγια για την, για την έρευνα αυτή, ε, που κάποιοι ίσω που ασχολείστε ακαδημαϊκά με τη δημοσιογραφία. Ε, ίσως να την έχετε συναντήσει στην προσπάθεια να ε, αναδειχτούν δεδομένα ε, που καταγράφουν τις απόψεις, ε, τις πεπιθήσεις και την πρόσληψη των δημοσιογράφων ε, για το ίδιο τους το επάγγελμα. Ε, είναι το ε, Διεθνές Δίκτυο Words of Journalism, το οποίο μας δίνει τη δυνατότητα να αποτυπώσουμε συστηματικά όλες τις αλλαγές που ε, συμβαίνουν στη δημοσιογραφία ως, συνθήκες, ως διαφορετικές συνθήκες, ως διαφορετικές εξελίξεις, σε παγκόσμιο επίπεδο, ε, μέσα από σχεδόν μια δεκαετία που χαρακτηρίζεται από μια πολύ έντονη πυκνότητα αλλαγών. Ε, μια σειρά από τα πρώτα αποτελέσματα της μελέτης αυτής θα, θα σας τα δείξω αμέσω τώρα. Ε, να σας πω πρώτα λίγα λόγια για το δίκτυο αυτό. Ε, στο δίκτυο συμμετέχουν ερευνητές από 66 χώρες, ε, συλλέγοντας δεδομένα που έχουν προκύψει από συναντεύξεις με περίπου 30.000 δημοσιογράφους. Το πρόγραμμα έχει ξεκινήσει από το 2007 μέχρι το 2012. Ήταν μια πρώτη φάση της μελέτης που συμμετείχαν πολύ ε, λιγότερες χώρες ε, και σκοπό ήταν πιλωτικά να δοκιμαστεί ένα δομημένο ερωτηματολόγιο, το οποίο χρησιμοποιήθηκε σε όλες τις χώρες που πραγματοποιήθηκε αυτή η έρευνα. Η δεύτερη και κυρίως φάση της έρευνας έγινε το, από το 2012 μέχρι το 2015. Είναι μια δουλειά που ολοκληρώθηκε πρόσφατα. Μια από τις βασικές αξίες αυτής της μελέτης, πέρα από, την, από το ότι καταγράφει τη δημοσιογραφία σε πολλές διαφορετικές κουλτούρες και σε πολλές διαφορετικές χώρες, είναι ότι υπάρχει ένα κοινό μεθοδολογικό πλαίσιο, το οποίο μας επιτρέπει, πέρα από το να δούμε τα αποτελέσματα μέσα σε ένα εθνικό πλαίσιο, να δούμε και, μέσα και τα αποτελέσματα με τη δυνατότητα συγκρίσεων, είτε αναπεριοχές, είτε ανα, αναϊπήρους. Και όπως βλέπετε, η, η παρουσία αυτού του δικτύου είναι, είναι αρκετά εκτεταμένη. Ο στόχος τώρα ποιος είναι. Ο στόχος είναι να βοηθήσει και τους ίδιους επαγγελματίες να κατανοήσουν ε, πώς βλέπουν οι ίδιοι το επάγγελμα, αλλά και πώς άλλοι συναδελφοί τους ε, από διαφορετικές χώρες βλέπουν το, το ρόλο και το επαγγελμά τους να εξελίσσεται, ε, να εξελίσσεται τα τελευταία χρόνια. Και παρόλο που όσοι έτσι ήμασταν στην κύρια ομάδα που ε, στήσαμε αυτή τη μελέτη, περιμέναμε ότι σε διαφορετικές χώρες τα βλέπαμε... Ε, ε, Πολύ διαφορετικά αποτελέσματα. Είναι αξιοσημείωτο ότι οι ανησυχίες και τα προβλήματα των δημοσιογράφων είναι αρκετά παρόμοια, κυρίως όσον αφορά την πίεση που προκύπτει από τις τεχνολογικές εξελίξεις, τις οικονομικές πιέσεις που έχει επιφέρει η κρίση στο επάγγελμά τους. Φυσικά, σε μεγαλύτερο ή λιγότερο βαθμό, αντίστοιχα. Ε, ο, ο κύριος εμπνευστής της μελέτης αυτής ε, είναι ο Τόμας Χάνιτς, ο οποίος είναι καθηγητής και πρόεδρος του Τμήματος της Δημοσιογραφίας του Πανεπιστήμιου του Μονάχου και ε, είναι στην ουσία αυτός που συντονίζει και όλο το, όλο το πρόγραμμα αυτό, το οποίο έχει αυτή τη στιγμή τη δομή ενός δικτύου με μια εκτελεστική επιτροπή και ε, κύριους ερευνητέ σε, σε όλες τις συνεργαζόμενες χώρες. Το site το έχω σημειώσει εδώ για όποιον ενδιαφέρεται να δει κάποια περισσότερα στοιχεία. Αυτή τη στιγμή τα δεδομένα από την πρώτη φάση της έρευνας είναι διαθέσιμα στο κοινό και σύμφωνα με τον κανονισμό που έχουμε για τη δημόσια διάθεση των αποτελεσμάτων από το 2019 και μετά όλες οι βάσεις δεδομένων που έχουμε συγκεντρώσει από τις 66 χώρες που συμμετέχουν θα είναι διαθέσιμες και αυτές ηλεκτρονικά. 
Ε, θα σας δείξω έτσι ε, μερικούς πίνακες, έτσι ενδεικτικούς, ε, για να ανοίξουμε τη συζήτηση γύρω από, τις, από το τι εμείς, είτε ως ακαδημαϊκοί, είτε ως επαγγελματίες στον χώρο, αναγνωρίζουμε και εντοπίζουμε ως ε, αλλαγές. Ε, αυτά τα αποτελέσματα είναι από το σύνολο των δεδομένων, άρα βλέπουμε αποτελέσματα και από τις 66 χώρες που συμμετείχαν. Ε, και βλέπουμε, νομίζω χωρίς έκπληξη για όλους μας, ότι στην κορυφή της λίστας ε, βρίσκουμε τους, ε, τους παράγοντες που επιφέρουν τις πιο δυναμικές αλλαγές στη δημοσιογραφία αυτή τη στιγμή, τα μέσα κοινωνικής δικτύωσης, το περιεχόμενο παράγεται από τους ε, χρήστες. Ε, βλέπουμε επίσης και μια ε, πολύ έντονη και άμεση εξάρτηση της δημοσιογραφίας από τις οικονομικές συνθήκες μέσα στις οποίες λειτουργεί. Και αυτή αναδεικνύεται μέσα από του επόμενου δύο παράγοντε που εντοπίζουν οι δημοσιογράφοι ω πολύ σημαντικοί για τι αλλαγέ που ε, έχουν επηρεάσει τη δουλειά του: τον ανταγωνισμό και την ε, πίεση για την, ε, για την ε, παραγωγή κέρδου. Ε, στα ευρήματα αυτά θα έλεγα ότι απογοητεύει η θέση τη διοντολογία που βλέπετε ότι είναι τελευταία ε, στη λίστα, ε, η οποία εμφανίζεται ω αυτή που έχει επηρεάσει ε, λιγότερο τι ε, αλλαγέ. Ε, στη δημοσιογραφία. Ε, αν δούμε ε, ε, ειδικότερα κάποια άλλα αποτελέσματα ως προς το πώς αλλάζει η καθημερινότητα, ε, η καθημερινότητα ο καθημερινός τρόπος εργασίας των δημοσιογράφων, ε, διαπιστώνουμε πάλι ότι οι νέες τεχνολογίες με τις ε, διαφορετικές δυνατότητες που προσφέρουν αναδεικνύονται ως οι πιο σημαντικοί παράγοντες της αλλαγή. Και αν μπορούμε να ε, ξεχωρίσουμε κάποιες πρώτες παρατηρήσεις από τα συγκεκριμένα αποτελέσματα που αναδεικνύουν και τον βαθμό στον οποίο οι ίδιοι δημοσιογράφοι θεωρούν ότι οι συγκεκριμένοι παράγοντες απέκτησαν μικρότερη ή μεγαλύτερη σημασία τα τελευταία χρόνια, ε, θα μπορούσαμε να εστιάσουμε στα εξή. Ε, καταρχήν, σε μια πολύ έντονη ε, σημασία που αναγνωρίζουν στην ε, διάδραση που έχουν μαζί με το κοινό τους. Ε, Δεύτερον, αυτό εμένα με, ε, με εξέπληξε λίγο ως αποτέλεσμα, είναι ότι δίνουν πολύ μεγάλη σημασία στις πανεπιστημιακές σπουδές και ειδικότερα στην ανάδειξη των δημοσιογραφικών πανεπιστημιακών σπουδών, ε, που ίσως μοιάζει λίγο δυσανάλογο για την ελληνική πραγματικότητα, αλλά νομίζω ότι είναι ένα στοιχείο που αξίζει κανείς να το δει και με πιο έτσι, ποιοτικά χαρακτηριστικά σε βάθος. Ε, και τρίτον, η πολύ μικρή αξία ε, που δίνεται στην αναγνώριση της σπουδαιότητας ε, της δημοσιογραφίας για την κοινωνία και ακόμα πιο κάτω σε χαμηλότερες θέσεις, την πολύ μικρή σημασία που δίνουν οι δημοσιογράφοι ε, στην ε, ελευθερία που απολαμβάνουν για να αποφασίζουν για το περιεχόμενο της δουλειά τους και στην αξιοπιστία που απολαμβάνει το ίδιο το επάγγελμά τους ε, σήμερα. Ε, ο χρόνος απασχολεί πολύ τους, τους επαγγελματίες του χώρου επίσης, ε, διαπιστώντας αφενός ότι ο χώρος, ε, οι ώρες εργασίας τους αυξάνονται ε, σημαντικά και αυτό το βλέπουμε στην τέταρτη και όλα θέση. Και την ίδια στιγμή ο διαθέσιμος χώρο, χρόνος για έρευνα και ρεπορτάζ ε, μικραίνει αισθητά, όπως βλέπετε αυτή τη στιγμή στην τελευταία θέση της, ε, της λίστας. Ε, ε, εδώ ίσως είναι λίγο δύσκολο να δείτε τις χώρες. Αυτές είναι ε, όλες οι χώρες οι οποίες ε, συμμετείχαν και καταγράψαμε, αλλά κάποια έτσι από, τα χαρακτηρι... από, τα... από τις παρατηρήσεις που θα ήθελα να... στα οποία θα ήθελα... Στις οποίες θα ήθελα να εστιάσω είναι ότι ε, αν μπορούμε να δούμε την, την κατανομή ε, του βαθμού της επίδρασης αυτών των παραγόντων που εξετάσαμε ανά τις χώρες, ε, βλέπουμε μια πολύ βασική διάκριση από τη μία... Οι δυτικέ χώρε, οι περισσότερο αναπτυγμένε χώρε, αναδεικνύουν ω σημαντικότερου παράγοντε ε, τη σχέση γύρω από το κοινό και ειδικότερα τη συμβολή του στην παραγωγή ειδήσεων, το feedback που παίρνουν από το κοινό, ε, την έρευνα ε, κοινού. Ε, δεύτερον, τι τεχνικέ δεξιότητε, πόσο πολύ σημασία δίνουν στο να ε, αναπτύσσουν και να αποκτήσουν ε, τεχνικέ δεξιότητε που του είναι απαραίτητε για τη δουλειά του. Και τρίτον, την οικονομική διάσταση της δημοσιογραφίας και συγκεκριμένα την πίεση που δέχονται ε, για, για παραγωγή κέρδους, για διεθνιστικά έσοδα, για περισσότερα κλικς πάνω στην, ε, στην, στην ίδια τη δημοσιογραφική δουλειά τους. Ε, από την άλλη πλευρά, στις λιγότερο αναπτυγμένες χώρες, η προσοχή στρέφεται αλλού. Στρέφεται σε δύο ε, παράγοντες. Από τη μία στη σπουδαιότητα της ε, δεοντολογίας και από την άλλη στη σημασία της εκπαίδευση ε, και της επιμόρφωση. Ε, 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 ως προς την εξέλιξη των ίδιων των δημοσιογράφων. Ε, 
Πάντως το σημαντικό που, κάτι ακόμα που μπορούμε να δούμε ε, και σε αυτό το διάγραμμα είναι ότι ε, βλέπουμε να υπάρχει μια πολύ πιο έντονη ε, συσπήρωση στο ποιες χώρες θεωρούν ότι οι οικονομικές επιδράσεις είναι αυτές που επηρεάζουν πιο πολύ τις αλλαγές στη δημοσιογραφία και λιγότερο, όπως βλέπετε, ε, οι αλλαγές που προέρχονται από την σχέση που αποκτά ο ίδιος ο δημοσιογράφος με το κοινό του. Δηλαδή, πα, παρόλη τη συζήτηση γύρω από την ε, συμμετοχικότητα που αναπτύσσεται στη δημοσιογραφία και την... Ε, παρουσία του κοινού πλέον και της συμπαραγωγής σε πολλές περιπτώσεις ε, περιεχομένου. Ε, ένας, ο άξονος που φαίνεται να οδηγεί τις ε, εξελίξεις ως προς τις αλλαγές και επαναλαμβάνω πως τις βιώνουν και τις αποτυπώνουν και τις ε, ε, αρθρώνουν οι ίδιοι οι δημοσιογράφοι είναι ε, κυρίως στο κομμάτι της ε, ε, οικονομικής αλλαγή. Ε, αν μπορώ έτσι να κλείσω με κάποια ενδεικτικά συμπεράσματα, θα έλεγα ότι καταρχήν σε παγκόσμιο επίπεδο αυτό που φαίνεται να επηρεάζει αυτή τη στιγμή το δημοσιογραφικό επάγγελμα ε, είναι η, η σχέση με το κοινό, η διάδραση και οι οικονομικές ε, επιδράσεις. Ε, υπάρχει μια πολύ μεγάλη ε, αναγνώριση σε τεχνικές δεξιότητες που ε, χρειάζονται οι δημοσιογράφοι σήμερα ε, σε συνδυασμό με το ότι αυτό ε, επιφέρει και μια πολύ μεγάλη ε, πίεση στους χρόνους εργασίας των δημοσιογράφων ε, αλλά και στους ρυθμούς ε, στους οποίους πρέπει να ε, ανταποκριθούν. Ε, αυτό όμως που επισήμανα και πριν είναι ότι η αλλαγή στη δημοσιογραφία ε, παρόλο που έχει κάποια κοινά στοιχεία δεν είναι ε, ενιαία σε όλο τον κόσμο. Ε, βλέπουμε τις διαφοροποίησεις αυτές που σας ανέφερα ανάμεσα σε λιγότερες και περισσότερο ε, αναπτυγμένες ε, χώρες. Ε, αλλά αν εστιάσουμε και σε πιο ε, λεπτομερείς διακρίσεις ανάμεσα στις χώρες, θα δούμε και εκεί διαφορές που σχετίζονται και με την ε, ε, διαφορετική πρόσληψη της ε, κουλτούρας και της δημοσιογραφίας και μέσα σε, σε ένα κοινωνικό ε, πλαίσιο. Ε, ε, αυτό όμως που νομίζω ότι θα πρέπει να το, να το δούμε ως... Ένας, ε, ως μια πολύ σημαντική ε, συνθήκη που αλλάζει τη δημοσιογραφία είναι η επίδραση που έχει ε, η οικονομία και οι, οικονομική, ε, οι οικονομικές δυσκολίες που βιώνει το επάγγελμα ε, σε πάρα πολλές ε, χώρες ε, και στην Ελλάδα το ξέρουμε ήδη πολύ καλά ε, και να δούμε πώς πλέον θα δούμε την αλλαγή της δημοσιογραφίας με ένα πιο ολιστικό πλαίσιο, όχι βλέποντας μόνο τις τεχνολογικές διαστάσεις που αλλάζουν ε, το χαρακτήρα ενδεχομένω της δημοσιογραφίας, ε, και πέρα από τις κοινωνικές και πολιτικές διαστάσεις, ένα πολύ μεγάλο κομμάτι του, του πώς η κρίση παγκοσμίως και σε κάθε χώρα ξεχωριστά θα αλλάξει το, το χαρακτήρα και τη φυσικονομία της δημοσιογραφίας όπως την ξέρουμε σήμερα. Ευχαριστώ. New trends in journalism. Okay, we don't. Okay. Hey, Kalispera. Θα ξεκινήσω με ελληνικά, αλλά θα αλλάξω στα αγγλικά. Uh, and uh, I will do that because uh, there is so much in common uh, with uh, David's uh, presentation, uh, and um, I would like to uh, have the opportunity to engage uh, a, a dialogue, a conversation uh, between us. Uh, and you, of course, uh, because we're talking uh, about uh, participatory uh, journalism. 
So, first of all, I, I would like to say that I'm very glad to participate in, in this particular conference because it takes me really back in time when I was, uh, when I was actually writing my PhD and then uh, Dan Gilmore's book, We the Media, was actually my Bible. And um, I feel really honored and privileged to uh, be able to uh, speak in front of uh, one of my uh, mentors, gurus, whatever you may call it. So, and uh, the, other th uh, the other thing is uh, that uh, all, the, um, all the participants, all, all of our uh, speakers so far, have, have uh, given me a great, um, great stimuli and, uh, and uh, have built great bridges uh, with uh, the thoughts I would like to share with you uh, today. So uh, David to uh, mentioned and talked about silent voices uh, that need to be heard and uh, that uh, journalists could help, uh, could help them be, be heard. So this is actually the main point of my presentation uh, today. It's about social journalism or impactful journalism. And uh, I think we, we kind of need uh, this, uh, uh, this shift uh, on how we perceive uh, journalism. So I will start by saying that um, last year uh, the School of Journal Journalism of uh, City University of New York uh, moderated a Twitter chat uh, entitled Social Journalism, how can we redefine uh, journalist as a service and how we can reconnect it uh, with uh, communities, highlighting the need in the media field to act not only as uh, content producers but also uh, to be able to uh, connect people, to intrigue conversation, and have a tangible impact. So in that uh, phrase, uh, the, key, the three key words are uh, communities, um, service, and impact. And uh, using these three, three uh, key words, I would attempt to, today to open, to open, to open up this uh, conversation uh, that leads to, to a very fundamental uh, question, which is, uh, what is, uh, what is media today, and what is the role of a journalist uh, today? I know it's a very broad uh, question. It's like a philosophical uh, kind of question. But uh, I think we, we, we need to go back and uh, redefine uh, this, uh, this role. Uh, so why why is this question so relevant uh, today? Uh, I will not I will not say something you have never uh, heard. Uh, I will say again that um, uh, the crisis, the global crisis, which is not only uh, financial and economical, is also a crisis uh, of uh, values, um, is um, is a main uh, is a main factor that uh, that that takes takes us back to to this uh, question so if uh, you if we go uh, back again to uh, the Reuters uh, report uh, to which Nikos uh, referred uh, earlier in the morning um, uh, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't be uh, we wouldn't find any we wouldn't see any findings uh, that uh, would surprise us uh, so we have uh, uh, the fail of uh, the traditional uh, media and uh, a shift towards uh, digital media. And uh, if, but if you, if you look um, closer, uh, the, um, the findings that uh, had to do with, uh, with Greek, with Greek media, and Nikos also mentioned, uh, the, uh, mentioned that, uh, you'd be even more uh, surprised because almost 80, 80, 80, Eight zero percent of uh, of Greeks uh, of Greek citizens um, they don't trust don't trust uh, Greek media and this is this is something that has to soak us it's it's soaking okay uh, so we have to do something uh, for that so this is not this is not uh, just uh, an incident it's uh, it's highlighting that we are. Uh, we are in front of uh, of the need of a paradigm shift. So, if we add uh, to this uh, the failure of the business models uh, that uh, traditional media uh, are 
are following uh, the past uh, years. Uh, this, uh, and this is also indicated not only by uh, the, um, the increase of uh, the, the cutoffs in, uh, in jobs and uh, also the, um, the cutoffs uh, in the advertising uh, uh, money, but uh, mostly in the, um, in the in in the fact that uh, citizens are not willing to pay anymore for uh, content that not only they don't trust, but uh, most of the times they don't even like it. Uh, so if we, if we think uh, about that, we, we shouldn't be that uh, optimistic. But I will stick with the optimistic uh, side. And uh, I would say that uh, today we have, uh, we have uh, lots of opportunities. And uh, when I say we, I, I don't only mean uh, the, the citizens. I, I also mean journalists. Because it's, it's, uh, it's time to reverse a little bit the focus from the opportunities that social media offer to citizens and see uh, what, uh, what social media offers uh, to, to journalists uh, as well. And um, social media, I think, uh, gives, uh, gives to journalists uh, the opportunity to master the art of listening. And listening for journalists sometimes is, is really hard. Uh, journalists don't like to, to listen. Uh, but uh, I think this is a time that we change this. And uh, we, uh, and we, we help um, uh, ourselves and uh, the new uh, generation of journalists to uh, be more responsive to the needs of their audiences. So here uh, I come to the first keyword, which is community. It is, it, it's not just uh, an audience. Uh, we are not talking only uh, about audiences. We are talking about uh, active communities uh, that uh, have uh, that can be our, um, our the other part of our conversation and can also and can uh, also participate uh, to uh, what is happening today in our world and uh, mostly they have access they have right uh, to access in content that will help them uh, in their everyday life and they will make their lives uh, easier and Dan also mentioned it uh, in the morning. It's uh, it's about access today. Journalism is about access, access, and not distribution. And uh, here comes the second keyword, which is service. So social media uh, came to propose, to repropose to uh, journalists their their reconnection with uh, the communities and to stimulate them to claim back again uh, their role as catalysts of uh, social change and innovation. Change and innovation are also difficult words sometimes for, uh, for journalists, and, uh, but this is something else uh, I think we need uh, to, to change. So the approach and the practical, um, and the practical uh, approach of, uh, of uh, journalists, journalists, not only as a, a product, but uh, also as a service and mostly as a service and the reverse of uh, the focus from uh, from top uh, up to top down uh, building better uh, communication and channels of uh, represent for representation for voices that are unheard uh, it's uh, what today we call uh, social journalism and here comes the third keyword which is impact and uh, according to me and my opinion, uh, this uh, approach might be the answer to uh, the crisis uh, that media face today. Um, so what is social journalism and who is a social journalist uh, today? According to uh, a definition, being a social journalist is uh, not about uh, a skill set or techniques. It's uh, mostly about mi a mission and a mindset. Uh, social journalism is uh, a different type of uh, journalism that uh, needs uh, to, for the journalists to work closer with uh, the communities uh, than traditional uh, journalists. But in that, someone might ask, but uh, the role of uh, journalism isn't to serve uh, uh, the public interest. Why should we reinvent uh, the role of journalists today? 
So the answer is uh, easy, and you just have to witness what's happening around the world uh, today. Okay, we we talked earlier we, about the crisis. We talked about uh, the um, uh, the fact that um, media are not sustainable businesses uh, anymore, and we also talked uh, about the need of uh, communities for more transparency and uh, diversity. Also today, media, uh, traditional media, do not invest uh, at all, I would dare to say, uh, in meaning meaningful content like um, uh, investigative uh, journalism. So journalists should find other ways uh, to serve the public uh, interest. According to uh, recent uh, research, uh, where almost 300 journalists participated and were interviewed in the context of uh, the changing media landscape, um, one, of the, one of the main conclusions was that journalism today uh, is becoming a, a form of uh, social entrepreneurship, an activity that has to combine commercial and non-for-profit uh, character uh, methodologies in order uh, to bring social change. And uh, I have a, an interesting quote here from one of the participants uh, in the research saying that we try to reinvent uh, the business model of uh, media uh, by intriguing uh, the interest of uh, public uh, opinion uh, and we do that uh, by presenting uh, stories uh, that are not that popular and that uh, concern communities that are unrepresented and he highlights we have to save social journalism today in an era that uh, commercial uh, model is dying but what is happening in the real world because this all might, uh, you, it might sound like a, a utopia. Uh, and how the media industry um, realizes uh, that need, if uh, it realizes. And, uh, and again, according to uh, surveys, uh, we can see that uh, the media industry uh, is uh, taking a small leap towards this, um, this direction. Uh, but uh, a small leap is, is a big thing. Uh, and from small leaps we can we can make bigger steps, and we have lots of um, lots of uh, paradigm, paradigm, paradigms, excuse me, examples of uh, of big uh, traditional organisations and uh, and smaller media startups uh, that are experimenting with uh, the production of uh, content uh, of meaningful content content engaging their communities. Uh, the, uh, David uh, mentioned ProPublica, and I also had ProPublica here as a, as a model uh, of uh, social journalism. Uh, ProPublica is, uh, is an independent uh, media organization and digital uh, platform uh, that um, encourages uh, investigative uh, journalism. And it's, uh, it's interesting to see that uh, it this initiative was uh, an idea of uh, Paul Steiger that used to be uh, the ex-editor the ex, uh, of Wall Street Journal. So he realized uh, that need, he saw that there was uh, a loop, uh, a hole uh, in the loop and, and uh, moved towards there. And uh, they, uh, they have won uh, one or two Pulitzer Prizes, I think, which is uh, a huge uh, uh, achievement in, uh, in the media um, uh, uh, sector and uh, they have a very interesting business model as well because they participate, with, uh, they collaborate with, uh, with other publishing partners and they give their content uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be published by other uh, big media organizations. Uh, one uh, other really interesting uh, example is BBC's Media Action. Uh, it's a, a charity uh, of, uh, of BBC uh, that actually uh, 
uses uh, journalism as a, a catalyst for uh, social change. They work a lot with, uh, uh, with communities uh, in Africa, so they go there and they, present, they produce content in uh, different formats, either the, it's uh, debate shows, dramas, radio and TV programs, mobile phone services, face-to-face -face communication, and they actually give voice to that silent voices. And they also produce research. They go there and they research. They see what those, these audiences need, and they distribute uh, the, um, the findings of uh, the research. And uh, last but not least, they offer mentoring. They offer mentoring services and training services for uh, journalists in order to be able to serve those um, those communities. Uh, another uh, interesting uh, but smaller uh, initiative is Brooklyn Deep. Uh, Brooklyn Deep is a, is a, is a, a quite successful digital platform uh, which is moderated by uh, people that have uh, an actual interest for the Brooklyn uh, area. Uh, so professional journalists uh, along with uh, citizens uh, share, uh, produce and share stories uh, data and news uh, that uh, map uh, the situation in the Brooklyn uh, area. So we have lots uh, of other examples that uh, I can share with you uh, later, uh, but this uh, is something that shows us the, the direction. And here uh, I, will, uh, I will do my ritual, I have a ritual uh, every time I speak uh, about social media and online journalism, I quote Jeff Jarvis. So I will quote Jeff, uh, his words. Um, content is something that fills something else, while service is something that accomplishes uh, something. Uh, the content begins from the desire of, their, uh, of the creators to produce, while uh, the service begins from the needs uh, of, uh, of the customers. We, try, we tend to consider uh, media and news uh, as content businesses, and we do the same uh, with uh, the education. But we shouldn't, um, uh, we shouldn't uh, approach, approach them, uh, but we should approach them as uh, services. I'm sorry, but I'm trying to do also the translation here. Uh, so social journalism uh, can, uh, can can uh, be uh, can means uh, the means the connection between the members of uh, a community and the distribution of uh, information between them, and also could be uh, the the platform for sharing uh, data and tools, and not only uh, the platform for uh, developing narratives, and uh, all the above uh, are a collaborative effort. So. What if uh, we tried to uh, answer the media crisis uh, by discussing not how media organizations can earn more money? Uh, we don't try to answer this uh, crisis uh, by engaging and empowering uh, local communities, by teaching uh, journalists to listen uh, their audiences and to produce not only qualitative content but also uh, important tools that will uh, serve the public interest. So social media today offers us that, um, that uh, possibilities and I will go back and I will say that uh, they, offer, they offer us the possibility to master the art uh, of listening. And I, I, will, I will say here uh, something uh, that I experienced some uh, months uh, ago. So last April we organized in collaboration with uh, the Department of uh, Media Communication and Culture of uh, Pantheon University, a hackathon uh, for journalists. I focus more uh, entrepreneurial solutions for uh, journalists. So the team that won that hackathon was Sabab Radio. It was a radio station that uh, produces a content from refugees. And uh, you know that refugee refugee crisis is a, is a huge issue uh, in Greece and in Europe. So this gave me uh, hope and uh, ha helped me stick to the optimistic side uh, 
uh, of, uh, uh, of this uh, situation, seeing young people to actually realize that uh, there is a need to give voices to, to give voice to um, silent uh, uh, voices. And uh, here I would like to stress, and I will finish uh, with that, that uh, we need also to develop strong advocacy and training uh, for this kind of, uh, of journalists. And there are lots of examples. I mean, uh, the city of University of New York have uh, a great program called Social Journalism. The University of uh, Oregon, the School of Journalism, have a great uh, initiative called Agora Journalism Center that actually encourage innovation in uh, journalism uh, that matters. Uh, there is uh, another network called Solutions Journalism Network that trains journalists and students on how to become more solution-oriented towards uh, social uh, challenges. And if we go now back uh, to our question, if uh, social media, and uh, by social media I mean social journalism here, uh, could be the answer to, uh, to media crisis, uh, I would say again yes, and I have some numbers that uh, that can support this. Uh, so, I mean, uh, numbers like money numbers, uh, because uh, this, this new uh, trend is also attracting lots of funds. Uh, a week ago, I think, uh, Knight Foundation uh, announced that uh, funds with uh, $220,000, uh, an interactive, interactive platform that will help in uh, networking and collaboration between uh, journalists and communities. And since 2006, over uh, $150 million have been invested in uh, social journalism um, uh, initiatives. Uh, so, if still all those uh, things sound a little bit far, far away or uh, utopian, and especially in Greece, where our media landscape is not the healthier uh, in the world, uh, I would say that, uh, and I would ask from uh, the youngest generation of uh, journalists uh, to try to think to, towards this other direction. Um, the direction of uh, the journalist as a social and that tries to connect, uh, connect his work more uh, with the content and the service that produces and less with uh, the medium or the platform uh, that works for. Thank you very much. Concepts on the table of social journalism and social um, entrepreneurship. These are concepts that encapsulate the idea that change is more a matter of mindset rather than just skills. It means opening up to communities, to meaningful contact for journalism, as you said, that matters, that has an impact. Now, I'm going to give you a word to the community for the questions that you want to ask to our three speakers. We may ask any questions to the three speakers of the panel. Okay. Any questions? No? Because... Thank you very much for this interesting presentations. I have a, a, a remark mostly that addresses well, that you can try to answer, three of you. Because I, I, I noticed there is a, some kind of a contradiction between the presentation of David and of Dimitra in the sense of a political economy of the journalism. I mean, David showed us very well that for the participation to be more substantial and important. Journalists have to make a supplementary effort to get engaged in the dialogue, to think about these kind of things, which is really great. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. I agree totally with that. But at the same time, the research that Dimitra showed us says that many journalists, especially in the North Hemisphere, say that they work more than before and probably they get paid less. So how do we resolve that? I mean, this is a serious question, and it's a question linked to, to the economy of the thing. We need journalists to invest more themselves in participation in order to have better things coming out. And at the same time, David, you have coordinated two books on that. We have shovelware journalism, we have productive 
productivity constraints that journalists in their everyday life, they don't even have the time to do what they should be doing properly. So how do we resolve that? Well, it's, it's clear that, that uh, most uh, news media companies uh, have their prior priorities wrong uh, in terms of how do they uh, invest the, 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 the workforce they are, they are using. Uh, we, and basically, I, th I think what, what kills, uh, what kills the, the social journalism that uh, Lida was advocating for is uh, the obsession with immediacy, with explaining the latest news uh, and f putting uh, the microphone in front of uh, the politicians that will express themselves anyway uh, through, through social media. So I think that it's about rethinking how efforts and resources are, are invested. And once uh, the, the, the priorities change, things become easier. Of course, uh, to change the priorities, you need to change uh, your, 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 what, what, what is your aim as, a, as an institution. And, and uh, when, when surviving economically as, as an institution is the main aim, as is the case for many, for many media companies, probably it's very hard to have the, yeah, the, the spirit uh, or the mindset to, to start thinking about how do I best serve my community. So yeah, we are in a hard position to, to walk in the direction that, that, that we are advocating. Yeah, if I may just try to um, give my, back my thoughts, Nikos. Um, we've been talking about journalists and how they should reinvent their profession and getting more training, uh, demanding more training from, uh, uh, from uh, their uh, bosses. Uh, and it's not working. I mean, journalists are receiving training or not and they end up with more uh, suffocating deadlines, less uh, money in their fees, um, more um, pressures from advertising, from PR, from uh, media owners, and on top of that, they also have to deal with talking to the audience. And maybe in the beginning it uh, sounded very appealing, but as we have seen in uh, also your study, David, um, Media organizations just, just shut the, uh, the option uh, for people to comment because most of the content is just rubbish. Uh, and then we try to find ways for journalists to reposition themselves. But maybe we should take a closer look to what we are doing because we are talking about the media owners. Yeah, they, we have a lot. <laughs> um, we have several things to say about them. We're talking about the, um, the uh, media professionals, but what, what about the people? I mean, even if we know that interactivity is important and that feedback is the concept that we all uh, want to invest um, in, um, how can we really train the audience? And, uh, and does the audience have anything relevant to say at the end? Uh, because maybe the interactivity is just that, that people will kind of very um, emotionally react to things that journalists say or write. Um, and I've been thinking about that when I was listening to um, Lidas and David's presentations, that we still, after so many years of talking about participatory journalism, we still have only a handful of examples uh, that stand out as you know, really uh, substantial um, journalistic efforts. It can be called social journalism, constructive journalism, uh, solutions journalism. But maybe we should kind of focus on, on the public uh, too. I mean, I don't have any suggestions, but I mean, I'm wondering, maybe people just don't want to say anything more than that. Or there is just a handful of people who have something to say, and we should try to make them stand out of 
the crowd. Uh, we, uh, David's me David mentioned the example of Guardian that they chose the moderators for uh, online comments from the pool of thousands of uh, people who were commenting. Mostly, I think, uh, most of the content was probably irrelevant, but they were some people who stood out. And maybe our attention should also shift a bit towards that side of, of the interaction and not just journalists. I think journalists at the moment, at least they're just too busy with trying to keep their jobs, trying to meet deadlines, uh, trying to kind of make sense um, of uh, anything that surrounds them. But what about us? I mean, how often have we all here in this room contributed to an active discussion um, with a journalist, uh, other than uh, being busy with replying to people who are just throwing hostile comments to something that we say as researchers or as professionals? I don't know, just some random thoughts. Uh, a question which is both for Lida and uh, David. Uh, so I liked a lot uh, Lida's suggestion and scheme for the three concepts as uh, what's the important, if you like, the three cornerstones for journalism, community, contribution, and impact. Uh, having said that, I have a kind of worry with the latter, with the impact, because it brings the instrumentality, which was a part of the worry that I, for David's pessimist at the very beginning. And as a matter of fact, we, most of the vices of contemporary journalism is because of the obsession with the impact. Uh, so I think if we insist on the other two pillars that you suggested, community and contribution, we have all the packet we want, and that will ease um, David's pessimism as well. Uh, you'll have the uh, community, uh, the, sorry, the contribution will allow people, will, will, allow, will allow journalists to educate each other and their readers, while the community aspect would reveal the more, uh, if you like, intrinsic value of participatory uh, journalism. I'm thinking from organizational studies where they have similar ideas with what they describe there as authentic uh, participatory leadership, uh, authentic participatory ethical leadership or something along those lines. So it's, sim I, 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 would, I would wonder how David will respond to those, to the three or two uh, suggestions that Lida uh, proposed and for Lida whether she really needs the third one. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, impact is a, is a very complicated term, okay? And by impact here, we mean uh, positive social impact, impact. We mean social change, tangible, measurable, that we can actually see it. Uh, hmm? uh, 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 the second wasn't contribution, actually, it was service. Okay, so, uh, okay. So uh, ser when, I, when I was referring to service, I was trying to make, uh, uh, to highlight the difference between product-oriented uh, journalism and service-oriented journalism. Okay, so did I answer your question now? It does the same thing, okay. namely I will go for did the I service and I don't, I don't really care that much about the impact. Did because I the, you? the impact, so again, from, if you like, from the leadership studies, they had the impact, uh, sus, uh, the impact factor is always uh, treated with suspicion because it leads either to transformative leaders or transformational leaders. So either you'll be obsessed to change your uh, audience or you'll be obsessed to change yourself as a journalist, none of which would help you that much with the participatory model you have. So I, I, I have a feeling that the service which is the same as what I was perceiving as contribution, plus the community would be enough to make a solid system for David's worries to go away. Yeah, yeah I mean, actually, impact is the, the outcome of, of this uh, combination. Uh, for example, there was a, a girl that started a startup, a media startup, uh, going to the favelas at Rio, uh, and she actually trained people there 
on how they can uh, produce uh, transmedia content. And they set up a, a, a newsroom inside the, the favela. So she, uh, she uh, engaged a community, uh, she produced a, a service, and that service had an impact to the, to the community, to give an example. Uh, I, I, I think that, that that's the key is putting uh, putting the accent on, on, on the community aspect and, and the service uh, in the in the sense that if if what the journalist does is aimed aimed at for the better good of the community as a whole uh, the the impact doesn't necessarily need to rely on on the responsibility of the journalist. But I think it's a legitimate uh, raison d'être. Uh, uh, it's, it's a legitimate way, way for the journalist to, to think of his or her role in society. Uh, I want to improve society, and I want to foster society to think about itself uh, in, in, the, in the process of transforming itself. So, uh, yeah, I, I think journalists sometimes are, are very much hand tied uh, by, by their own principles and values. When, when journalists still today uh, say, um, uh, I only work with facts, I only, was, I only uh, do objective work, uh, I just report and explain what happened and nothing else, they are actually disconnecting themselves from, from a, a responsibility I think they have as citizens and as citizens who serve a community of uh, helping that community to to grow in in positive directions. Uh, so just explaining what is happening is not, for me it's it's not enough uh, to to do good journalism if we understand it as a service. Um, the question is for Mr. Um, Domingo and Ms. Lida um, You have uh, referred earlier uh, to the contribution of the citizen uh, journalism, uh, to the traditional journalism, but with some stereotypes. Uh, you said citizens have many stories to share, but they don't have the skills uh, to do it. But this is the role of a journalist, to uh, take uh, stories, and uh, uh, then he uh, has to do his job. And, you said the art of listening, that uh, journalists don't listen. Okay, I think this is a stereotype. Uh, journalists don't listen. Um, and you also said that the economic model, as we know it, is dying. And my question is, uh, I'm wondering if uh, the social journalism doesn't help the traditional journalism, doesn't give a new perspective, but he's trying to replace it or uh, to abolish it. So, social journalism has the solution, uh, journalists don't listen, so journalism is, as a work is dead. Well, we, we touched the fiber there. Uh, I, well, to answer my part of the, of the, of the question, there's definitely uh, some citizens that have uh, uh, the skills to produce very interesting uh, pieces of information. But you, you, we, we have repeated several times today that that ends up being, in many cases, uh, the exception to the rule. Uh, and, and that's why I think there's still place for journalists to reach out and be, and be the ones who explain what is happening where nobody is taking the time or, or has the skills to, to explain it. So that's one part of the answer. Uh, yeah. So definitely journalists are not dying. Okay, and we, and, uh, and I mean, we need good journalists today more than ever because we ha you have the tools. I mean, you have so many tools and you can do amazing things with our tools. When I say that journalists don't listen, is that they don't, they seem, okay, to uh, not to pay much attention to what uh, the audience really needs. Uh, I have been uh, interviewing journalists for many years, uh, starting from my PhD and continuing until now. Uh, so one of, of the questions I uh, usually ask them is, uh, 
what do you read in social media and how do you analyze the data you get out uh, of social media? And uh, I have very few replies uh, that uh, are saying that I, we try to identify uh, what our audiences are, uh, really care about. Uh, so th this, is, uh, this is the listening uh, part, uh, to be able to understand better what your audience want. Uh, and this, uh, this for me would be a very good uh, way for, uh, for local media. Uh, local media can use really much uh, social media monitoring or listening uh, in order to, uh, uh, to produce more, um, to produce content that is close to what people really care or uh, really need. And uh, social journalism is not, is not going to replace uh, any journalism. I think social journalism is the core uh, of, uh, of journalism as we knew it uh, centuries uh, ago. I mean, uh, the essence of, uh, of journalism is to serve uh, the public interest, is to make a contribution or uh, to, uh, uh, to offer uh, a service to, to the community. So, because sometimes we forget uh, our roots and this history of, uh, of uh, journalistic uh, values, because we, we, give, we tend to, uh, to give lots of attention to uh, the technological uh, developments. Uh, I, what we propose here is uh, to reconnect uh, with uh, the, the classical virtues of, uh, of good, old, good, traditional journalism. Find a good story that really uh, matters, that can bring impact to your community. If, if I can add one last thing. Uh, I, I think we are not, we are not criticizing journalists, and, and, and the survey from, of Walls of Journalism also shows uh, that the journalists are under a lot of pressure. Uh, I think the main problem of journalism nowadays is is the media industry and its uh, and its uh, calculations that we need to cut on resources on human resources in order to compensate the losses in income of uh, advertising that is going down and of course that's that's uh, the most stupid strategy you can have as an industry to cut on. The, the core of, of what produces value, which is the people producing content. Uh, and that's why I, I, I am quite uh, hopeful with when seeing uh, journalistic initiatives that um, neutralize the equation of, of, uh, of business uh, strategies and mm, are designed as journalism as a non-profit uh, initiative where, and in many cases that may, takes the shape of cooperatives of journalists who uh, their only aim in economic terms is making the, the, the production of news sustainable, so pay the work they are doing, but their aim is not winning money but serving the community. So I think there we, we have some, some interesting uh, developments. The question is are they, uh, are they sustainable at, at a bigger scale because more, more, many of these initiatives tend to be tend to be rather small in size. So, well, no, there's no definitive, definitive answers, but there's definitely alternative possibilities uh, to the current situation. And, and this might be a form of, of citizens' participation to the journalistic process. I mean, not only uh, comments or participating to, uh, to the content, but also uh, supporting uh, the, the, the work of uh, journalists. And we have seen projects that have been crowdfunded, for example, and we have also seen projects that uh, are based on micro donations from, uh, from individuals, from citizens that really care about the story. So they go and say, okay, I like, I like the way uh, you write, I want to see this story out, so I will support you. And this is something, crowdfunded yeah, crowdfunded journalism. And this is something you also mentioned. You said about uh, people that subscribe uh, to a medium to follow a specific journalist and to reward him. Just, just two points. Professor Dimitrakopoulou, do, do you have any findings about the commercialization of the news? The pressure of advertisers 
and uh, if there are any nuances between uh, print and broadcast journalism and uh, digital journalism? Uh, yeah, we do. We because we have a, um, a very large number of variables that we need to study. Uh, but I don't have anything at the moment to to share because we we are in the process of analyzing the data set. But we will be in contact, as you know. So I'll get and, back to you. And uh, for uh, Professor Tsene, she say, you said that uh, journalists must be responsive responsive to the needs of the audience and. Who defines what the audience really needs? Most shares in the social media are for soft news. Most clicks are for soft news, for sex and crime. What? So, thank you for, for, for the question. And um, uh, uh, journalists uh, should work closer to the communities and not only uh, through uh, social networks uh, but social networks can give a good idea of, uh, of uh, what uh, people are discussing uh, about and as a journalist you might be uh, you you have to be able to filter somehow uh, this uh, uh, this uh, discussions I mean this is your work this is what you've been trained uh, to do uh, but uh, also, uh, I mean, there it's 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 uh, it's a really really vast uh, landscape, and uh, you have you have to be um, you you have to to dare to dig really deep in that uh, vast landscape in order to understand your community. It's not is is not it's not uh, an easy task. Uh, it, it takes lots of time and it's a challenging task. But this is why uh, journalists uh, are here. Uh, they are here to report uh, what their audiences need. Uh, so I, uh, I say to, uh, what I say to all journalists is to be able to, to listen carefully, not only uh, the superficial uh, uh, comments or uh, retweets or uh, posts. There are lots of communities that are having really, really, really interesting conversations, uh, not in, uh, on Twitter, but uh, a close group in Facebook, for example, or in a forum that is uh, focused on a very um, specific uh, issue. And here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring a, a small example that takes us really, really back, and it takes us, to, takes us back to the, first, uh, uh, to the first Obama election. And uh, I think this is, this is something that, uh, that so showed the, uh, the direction towards the art of listening. So uh, Obama was, uh, was, giving, uh, was, uh, was being interviewed uh, in a big uh, network. Uh, and he was uh, answering uh, the questions that uh, the journalist was asking. Uh, next day there was, uh, there was um, a blog post uh, in a blog called Momocrats. So they're Democrat, democratic mothers, uh, and they they said, uh, "Okay, Mr. Obama, we uh, we watch your uh, uh, your interview, blah blah blah. Great job, okay. But uh, what about that, that, and that?" And they they asked some specific questions that really. Uh, uh, mattered for them, for mothers that uh, want to take, uh, that for working mothers that don't have time uh, for their kids. And the, uh, the people from uh, Obama's uh, office uh, read this blog, and Obama gave an answer to that, uh, to that uh, people. So this is careful listening. <laughs>